the assessment and the, and they adopt the town role, there's no nothing as the town can do because we're already doing a role. We, 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 exactly. Well, I want to be absolute. So so I want to be absolutely clear. I would have thought that that should come to us for approval. And so if, 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 if you're simply put in a role and you don't talk to anybody ever from Amerinick and they happen to go online and look at your role and they want to adopt it, that, then that's a different matter. If there's one second, one second of additional time, I want, to, I want you to come to this board and ask for approval. Right. One was, second. I was curious if, there, if the town had had to pass a local law resolution. Uh, they had to, right. and it was uh, passed in September, and they were waiting for the end of the period where people could. Right. Uh, yeah, I would have thought that they would want in. something from us, but if, they, if you're telling me they can simply look online and never talk to mm -hmm. our, our, our town assessor, that's fine. The only issue <clears> for <throat> them is when there are certiorari's, and, there, and they say this is our policy anyway. We consult with all of our you know, our school boards and our municipalities. No, no, that's that's that the, the no, well, the, no the, supervisor. That, that's not true. No, we, sorry. This is what we do. We would then have to consult with Mamarinick, yes. correct? As we as we consult with Rybrook and the Port Jester schools and the Rynick, we do this as a as a no, part actually, of our Actually, I've never seen a situation where we've consulted with Mamarinick at all on anything. Because they retain their own attorneys. That's why. But we do consult with them because the attorneys well, work together. I, I so I would so I uh, town assessor Canaro, would you do me a huge favor? You put together a memo, mm -hmm. and I want to know if there's any additional work whatsoever. Okay. If there's any additional work whatsoever, anything different from what we've done in the past, then I would very, I, I think it's sufficient. I think it's sufficiently important to bring in front of this board. Okay. And I think that we should certainly this board ought to have consultations with the Village of America if they're going to try and implement a program, you know, that 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 impacts us in some way. They they ought to know. You know, we could say, you know, uh, you know, we could pass a resolution that says, look. Do what you want, look online, and you know, and, and, and get get whatever you do, what you can. We're not going to take one second of our assessor's time, and if it is, I want to look at it. I want to study it. Well, there is some issues about mapping that they have certain parcels that we don't have, and vice versa. So that is something that the village is looking at to try to match up, and uh, we yeah. have to figure but a way. In to my view, it. this should be a consultative process. It I, shouldn't I be should not be imposed by the village of Mamaritic on the town of Rye. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. But I think Deputy Supervisor had meetings with the village it, officials it, and we, discussed. We, this. we did, and yeah. we did, and 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 then what I want to make absolutely clear I mean, that, is that there was a preliminary thing. discussions, and I'm fully yeah. aware of what the conversations we had memos before, and what I wanted to make clear tonight is before you agree anything, you ought to make a report to this board. I mean, you're not going to, you know, Deputy okay. Supervisor Lenoir would never think about doing it behind the scenes, and he would never think about coming, not coming to the board well, and say what this involves. If it requires an expenditure of money from the town, then only the board Paul, can approve that. Uh, that's, no, no. But Good that's, business practice is, tra this board has been 3,000, 10,000% transparent from day one. We're not going to implement a change like this or participate in a change like this without full disclosure. And full transparency. That, 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 that's, that's wholly alien to anything that's happened at this board. Uh, Town Supervisor, Villan uh, Deputy Supervisor Villanova was very clear. I think the memo was four, five, six months ago. Yeah. The meetings took place four or five. Uh, Town, Town Assessor Canower looked at it, has been having follow up conversations. So she's telling us today she's had more conversations. I'm simply saying before anything gets definitively decided, we should take it up at this board at a minimum presentational form. And I would have thought, you know, and get full support of the board behind this kind of change. I wouldn't want to do it behind the scenes without the full support of this board. That would make no sense whatsoever. The, uh, the way that, that we <coughs> left it with the, with the village of Mamaronek uh, is that uh, they were in the, uh, in the beginning stages when we first discussed this, uh, where they were going to get to this point now. And I'm glad that they're at that point. Uh, and it's twofold. Obviously, it eliminates the redundancy, okay, because you have two departments doing the same work. Uh, but it also gives a, a great vote of confidence from the village of Mamaronek to the town of Rye that they have enough confidence in the town of Rye that we're doing the right job. Uh, so the job that we're doing, uh, the job that Denise and her staff is doing with the assessments, uh, is, is nothing's going to change in that sense. But uh, Supervisor Carvin is right. If there is something different that you may have to do, and you're not going to know it now, if there is something that comes uh, that you may have to do, uh, you know, we have to start to think out of the box now. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get on the phone with the village of Mamaronek, and you're going to say, listen, 
I need a part-timer to come here to the town right uh, with uh, work with me. Give, give me somebody for 10 hours a week, and that would eliminate our burden. So what does that do? They have someone who's working already. There's maybe a little bit more work that needs to be done in your office, and that's a way that we could do an IMA, shared services, with the town of Rye and the village of Mamaronek that will benefit the section of Rye Neck. It's very simple. I don't think that's so, it's something that yeah, we, we I, can't I, do. I agree. I think the IMA would, I would have thought you'd want some form of IMA. Uh, I, I don't know why we would not yeah. want an IMA. So I, I, I because under the state town law, we, the town, have the primary assessment function for the entire town. So regardless of what any of our villages or school districts do, it is our job by law to have an assessment role and to defend the assessment role. That's all we do. That's the minimum of what we have to do. Correct. So if anyone in any of our communities challenges an assessment, then we are legally obligated to defend the assessment. And that's what this comes down to. Instead of having five assessment offices, there will now be one. <coughs> so the three villages oh. now have no assessment offices. The school districts obviously have no assessment function. So the town of Rye will be the only assessment for the entire town, which includes the Rye Neck section of the village. Can, can, you, can you explain exactly what this proposal would be in terms of what roles the town of Mamaronek would take in terms of assessing? They would still assess a, uh, assess a certain amount of the village, Yes, the, right? the, the village of Mamaronek is... What they're not going to do is assess the part that's being assessed already by the town of Rye, is that correct? Correct. correct. What happened was the village of Mamaronek is in two towns. It's one of, right. I think, two or three villages that are in this odd situation where half the village is in the town of Mamaronek and half the village is in the town of Rye. Because the town of Mamaronek had been not at full value, they had been using this, uh, the uh, segmentation rate, right. they, the village of Mamaronek has its own assessment office. Mm -hmm. And they uh, would do their own assessing, and they would do their own tax collection, which they're going to continue to do. The numbers were often different. In other words, the village assessor would oftentimes have a different number than the town of Mamaronek assessor or the town of Rye assessor. And so you would have different assessment numbers. So when there was a challenge to the assessment, the village would have to engage council to defend their number. The town would engage council to defend their number. They all go to court. They all work it out, and they, they settle the case. Two years ago, the town of Mamaronek decided to go to full value, at which they completed, and starts this year. So by virtue of the fact that now the town of Mamaronek is at full value, the town of Rye has been at full value since, I think, 2004. Four. I think, right? So there was no reason for the village to have a separate assessment function because the two towns now are at full value, so there shouldn't be any question about the assessments. And they could abolish their assessment office and just let the two towns do what they've been doing forever, which is simply have an assessment role. So they will adopt town of Mamaronek role for the town side, the town of Rye role for the town of Rye side, and then they're done. They don't need their own assessor. Okay. Uh, so that's essentially what we're doing. And what, this is what we do for Port Chester. We do this for Rye Brook right. as well. We don't that charge them extra. We don't, we don't do anything. We just have a role, and they let us uh, <coughs> defend it. Now, uh, in certain cases, as we all know, the village of uh, Rye Brook and the Blind Brook School District will sometimes retain their own separate legal counsel to uh, represent them in certain cert cases, which is their prerogative. Um, and, but it's at their expense, uh, their sole expense. So in other words, they don't charge the town for their legal expense because the town is already paying a lawyer. So the village of Mamaronek, hypothetically, if there was a particular case that was very interesting to the town, the village board, they could retain their own attorney to join with our attorney in and, and we'll, you know, st work on the case together. But that would be at their expense, not at our expense. Right, understood. So I don't know that there would be additional work going forward because we already have a role. There might be some issues in the transition yes. process and that might, you know, affect what we do because mm -hmm. the, t the village is essentially abol has already abolished their assessment right. office when and the assessor retired. Might there be less work because there wouldn't be a need for reconciling between the two assessed No, there's never been any reconciliation. Um, the mm -hmm. only issue is this, and we again, we do this as a matter of routine with all our villages, is when we settle a, a negotiate a settlement on a cert case, mm -hmm. we do reach out to the villages and the school districts to tell them their exposure and to get their input to say, this is what's going to happen. Because as you know, the town tax is tiny, so the refunds don't really affect the town, but they do affect the school districts right. and the villages. Mm -hmm. So we do, our councils are instructed to reach out to the, the municipalities to, to get them involved so they either approve the settlement or they 
are in the loop on it, so there's no shock that the village board gets a bill on a refund, and they said, well, how did this happen? Nobody told us. So we do that, and that's part of our process. Does the uh, village of Maranek, uh, Portchester pays us a collection fee, don't they? For collection of taxes. I, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's what a collection fee right. is, correct? Yep. And the village of Rybrook pays us a collection fee on tax. Don't, does the village of Maranek pay us a collection fee? No, we no. do not. They collect, collect their taxes. own taxes. They have their own tax collection. Which so. Is, which yeah. is part of their clerk's office, correct? Yeah, they collect their own taxes. Is that right about right. that, Paul? Yes, the clerk treasurer's office collects the taxes. Right, they, have, the they have a clerk treasurer, just like you know. Right, and no, I understand. So I'm just trying to figure out the if, if, how that impacts this this discussion we're having on well, assessment. You know, the the, the impact <coughs> that I see, and that we always we need to. Because my my concern, part of it, yeah. my concern is, you know, that we, in all honesty, you know. We'd have to. I want. I really want to uh, completely understand the impact on, on the assessment office because you're to change the status quo. And ultimately, if uh, you know there's a, a additional burden put on our assessment office as a result of this change, you know I think we need to think about whether we charge the village of Marinick for that or not. And I think you proposed a good solution, Deputy Supervisor. Well, they can send a clerk over if that 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 solves the problem, but. Before, certainly before I, I, I'm going to want to have an opinion on this. And I, and I know we, this has been going on in the background, and, you know, I'm, as you say, I, I agree. I'm glad that it's moving in the right direction. But I just really wanted to, you know, forewarn you, certainly before I support this policy, I want to understand the impact on your office. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I was just, just wanted to say real quick, and not to continue this discussion longer than it needs to be, but the, the focus needs to be, on the residents and on the taxpayers, okay? So we're eliminating redundancy, okay? So it's not gonna necessarily affect, you know, Porchester or, Ry or Ry <coughs> Rybrook residents, but the residents of, of Mamaronick, uh, in, in the village of Mamaronick, you know, if the town of Rye is already uh, defending, a, a, you know, uh, the assessment, okay? And the village then hires an attorney to defend the assessment, the, the residents of Rye Neck are paying that bill. Twice. So, twice. So the important aspect here is that we're in a position to continue to do what we're doing, and, and in, in simultaneously the, should, the, the savings should trickle down. The cost go, should go away, and now the, the, the residents should pay less in tax. That's really where we need to, where the focus should be. And, and, I, and that's, that has to be all part of it. They're, they're, that's that's, the, that's the, the end game, really. Right. And for the residents themselves, they'll only grieve one assessment. They won't be grieving a village assessment, a town assessment, and the town assessment's very transparent, being that it's market rate, and they on, will only have to apply for an exemption once with See, us. I'm not, I'm not aware of any time we, I, I'm very fully conversant with the times we've gone to Rybrook, involve them, Porchester involve them. It may be just that we haven't had any big certiorari cases with the Village of Maranek, but I have no recollection where we've consulted with them on a certiorari case or anybody in the Village of Maranek for that matter. I mean, we it's just, we just, pardon me? We do. Yes, we do. So which ones, have I, which one, which, which ones were that? Well, we had, you haven't had, had some big had ones. No, I, I'll, tell you, you had, you had, you had I'll tell you what you had. I'll tell you what you had. Tom, you had Tompkins Avenue. Right. You had the, you had the yacht um, club. You had the yacht club. Yeah, we had the higher special council. You had the uh, you had the strip. You had the strip mall uh, where the restaurant where the old bite spot was. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, strip mall there. But, had, but did we? I, I don't recollect calling in the school board or calling in the village and saying, the, "Hey, our attorney we, does that. The attorneys do that." Well, that's not okay. Well, again, that, I mean, they do that with everybody. <clears> they're not just in the right. well, They do it with all the cases. You had four 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 East Boston Post Road. Well, just right. uh, just to be clear. Well, we all know what happened with uh, the airport uh, in Rybrook this year, where the whole village, the whole community got involved. But when we, whenever we've had a big certiorari case, we call on the school board and the village board, and that's what we've done, and right. where I've been involved. Yeah. Right. So I guess the, the there daily hasn't been, there hasn't been something of that magnitude, like right. like the, the airport where the, the explosion but even, was but so we great. Had, we, we had, but we had, yeah. But as a as a as a matter of policy and practice. The attorneys who handle our third cases always talk to whether it's Tony Soretto in the in Port Chester or the village attorney in Mamaronek or the school board. They owe Ed Bean. They always reach out to those attorneys. And you're saying so Village of Mamaronek hires a private attorney and the town they, hires they, a private attorney? 
you mean now or in no, the future? Now, right yeah, now, yeah. Now, now there's a village attorney who represents the village of Mamaroneck. Uh, Charlie Goldberg. So because his firm handles no, certain that. cases yeah, yeah, no, for the I, village. I, of, I, part I, of his job is the village attorney is to handle all the. So when cases. when so when, if you take any of the the properties we work with, we're working with Aldo or Jeff Bender, whomever. Right. They would reach out to them and say, uh, "Hey, this case is coming up." Whereas uh, we would handle it solely in the case of Ryebrook or Porchester. They go in jointly. There's yes, two they, lawyers in the room. Yes, because they have they. Uh, by the way, with the, with the with yeah, the I understand, that, I understand that. Yeah. So there, there's actually even two separate cases because it's a. Village. So they then they, they go out and hire their own appraiser. Uh, well, that, then we we talk about that. Sometimes they do. Well, could you? I, they, I just you know, give me. A, yeah. Just let's. I want to go through some yeah. examples. I mean, because what I'm hearing is that yeah. they so they're going out. We, when we hire appraisers in Remarinick, right in Rynek, they're going out and hiring an appraiser as well. I, 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 I don't know that they've we ever hired. I mean, they might, uh, but we haven't had a major case it's like really Home Well, Depot we've hired appraisers in Mamaroneck, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. Well, well, Joe, we hardly yeah. hire, as you know, we yeah, hardly yeah. hire appraisers anywhere I'm saying, in town. I'm saying, but have we hired in? Steve Sherwood has done some on the Yacht Club. And, I, mean, yeah. I mean, we've done some. And they, they've hired a separate appraiser as well? I don't know if they hired a separate appraiser. They might have shared the cost with us. I don't no, know. they didn't share the cost. That's what I'm trying to get we, at. We don't know. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that, that they haven't. I'm not sure if they have or not. But generally, okay. they can use our. They can work off our appraisal. They can use our appraisal. Well, right. I, I, what I'm anyway. I'd like to see right. some analysis on this. I mean, the savings here all goes to the village. You understand that? There's no. There's no savings to the town here. This is a, a no, 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 by no, the no, village. Wait a second. To I, eliminate I, redundancy. I, I, right. I, I, yes. Smart. You know. That's exactly. I, I don't always agree with everybody, but there is a savings. If there is one resident. Anywhere in the town of Rye that saves money, right? There's no savings in to the town ta government, right? Yes, right. There there's, is a savings to the right. town Right. That's taxpayer. that's the yes. benefit. Yeah. The benefit, and right. and the winners as a whole, is and and I don't, you know people forget about this, but the, is is the Rye Net section of Mamaroneck, and that they're the winners as a whole, right. and right. That's so what very we important. and we have a fiduciary responsibility to all the town residents, correct. Right. And so what we have to make absolutely certain is by by making the residents in Rye Neck win that we don't have the other ones lose. And they, so they, I, no, I, I don't see that. I don't see that happening at all. Right. So that's what that's the analysis that needs to be done. I I, I agree with you. I think in, on, on, on uh, overall, we're, this is exactly what we're trying to do: is share services. So it makes infinite sense for them to eliminate. But I, you know, the prospect of having that happen without that, that coming to this board for me is anathema. I would, uh, you know, I, I think that's that's wholly alien to everything we've ever done. So to, to do that behind the scenes without it coming to the board it makes no sense to me. Um, but but anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll do the, please do the memo and we'll, we'll figure it out and, yep. and, and, and take Certainly. a look at it. Did you have anything else? No, that's it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Honorable Mr. Mecca. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Supervisor Carvin, members of the Town Council, the bearer of good news is here. It is time for the village of Portchester residents who are responsible for their own taxes to pay the second half, the second installment, the second half. The bills are out there. For the schools or the? Uh, this is for the village tax. Village so schools are next month. That's okay. after January. That, that bill will be out very soon. I am a little early with the bills, but the banks have been calling and they want the files as quick as possible because the taxpayers are, they start demanding from now for the year-end tax rates for next year. So we're a little bit early. Unfortunately, it's the week of Thanksgiving, but you have till the end of December, so there is some time to pay it. But just remember, it's in the mail, and remember, if you're responsible for the taxes, you have to pay in Port Chester residents only for this time, and it's a 2% if you're late. Okay, any questions? As, no, not for me. No. Nope. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank Ryan. you. Mr. Burns, anything from finance? No additional. No additional? Okay, Town Clerk Vespia. I submitted my report, and I just would like to mention that we're settling in our new home on 222 Grace Church Street, and every day gets better. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. And please keep us posted on any changes that we can do to make it better. Yes, I appreciate that. Thank uh, you. Now one quick question for, uh, for Hope. Um, as the conservator of uh, burial space over for the veterans, um, how are we with that? Do we well, need to purchase more graves? Um, I just had a conversation with Mr. Lane this week because uh, a Billy. veteran passed away in the mm -hmm. town. Right. right. Yeah. 
Kelly, right? Bill Lane. Oh, Bill. Oh, Bill Lane. Bill Lane, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, That's Kelly. Uh, yeah, yeah. William Kelly passed away. He's a veteran, and um, I think after this, we're only going to have four more. What is the What is the purchase uh, per, per grade? Do we know yet? Um, I'm not sure. At one time, it was only fifty dollars. I remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, if I can ask you then, because only because of this budget cycle. Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, you know, uh, see what we can do is um, incrementally, uh, maybe get prices on 5, 10, 15, 20 uh, right. spaces. Uh, but what I don't want to do is, is get, I, I don't want to get down lower than right. the four that we have now. I want to make sure that we continue that, uh, that option for our okay. veterans. I was, we were going to have a conversation this week. I know <coughs> okay, you know what, let oh. me know when you speak with Bill. Okay. I, I love to, I, I know, I know him a long, long time. He's really wonderful to work with. <coughs> yes. Um, also, we do have niches. We have about nine okay. work, uh, formations, but we need some more grades. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Town Attorney Noto. Uh, nothing. I just need a brief executive session to discuss uh, litigation, in rem litigation, please. Okay. Um, Mr. Nwan, I got anything for Crawford Park? Uh, just two pieces of information that the <coughs> board should be aware of. Uh, we've begun an uh, uh, interior painting project. We're painting the inside of the solarium and the hallway running from the kitchen to the main room. Uh, we're, again, trying to integrate that same uh, color scheme that we have that's been received so well. Uh, and uh, once we're finished, the entire downstairs will then have been uh, fully painted and uh, look quite nice. Uh, and then uh, the second piece is uh, the Friends of Crawford Park uh, have uh, been successful at getting 28 new trees. And uh, wow. <coughs> those trees were planted over the past uh, two weeks or so, three weeks. Uh, and we're, we're hoping that uh, you know, they take very well. Uh, and they'll go a long way toward helping supplant some of the trees we've lost over the last several years. Where were they planted? Uh, the majority of the trees were planted on what I would call the top section. Um, some around the playground, some along the roadway. Um, along the equipment uh, uh, area, if you will, the equipment pen. Uh, we have a couple of trees that were planted uh, along the roadway by the ball field, actually a little bit further down. Uh, that pretty much covers right. it. But the majority were, were prior to the mansion as you're coming up. Uh, we lost quite a lot of, a lot yeah. of trees uh, in that area. Thank you. Mr. Nowotnik, what are, how are we doing in terms of revenue from Crawford Park? Uh, revenue from Crawford Park uh, is uh, still a little on the slow side. We have seen, uh, ever since we implemented the alcohol policy, the uh, costs, the additional costs of the alcohol policy have tempered the demand. Uh, I don't have uh, the actual number. Hang on a second. I do have it. Crawford Park fees uh, right now, as of October, 47,983. As of the end of October, uh, that's running a little bit short of, of where we would have liked it to be. Uh, I think uh, for this budget cycle, we budgeted, hang on a second. On a year to date basis. $75,000 we budgeted, and, right. and uh, you know, after okay. 10 months, we've only got 47, 48,000. Right, that's on a year to date basis? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you, Mr. Nowatnik. Um, Superintendent Highways Di Crescenzo. And we have your report. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Di Crescenzo? Uh, John, I know that the, you had, you had uh, Jefferson uh, Avenue Bridge uh, is being shut down for uh, a few it, days. I it know was, that uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it uh, was shut down for one day to apply this special epoxy to uh, fill some of the spider cracks that were in, in the concrete on the deck. Okay, that, that was uh, that worked, was, worked well? As far as we know, they, they shut it down today to do that work Right. prior to the... Uh, it was only one day? I thought it was going to be shut down for uh, more than one other day. 
I, I thought it was only one day according okay, to the email great. that I got. Okay, good. Yeah. It's supposed to be open to traffic again tomorrow. All right. And then uh, just uh, uh, I want to hear what the plan is for Otter Creek. I don't want that to get away from us. No, well, we'll have to sit down with uh, Autumn and Kirby and go over a few things and try and find a, uh, you know, a, a reasonable way to uh, approach this project because all the bids that we have gotten were r ridiculously expensive and, and way out of uh, the realm of what we thought would be a, a, you know, a reasonable amount of money to complete the project because it is just a very small project. It's about eight beams and a couple of closure plates. But uh, Adam and Kirby has uh, had a hard time finding a company, that local company, that wants to do the work at a reasonable rate. Do you have the scope of work? Could, uh, could you email me the scope of work? Because <laughs> I, I, I absolutely, I'll get that from Adam and Kirby, and I'll send you a set of the plans. Yeah, all right. And I just, I, email I, the board, please. Okay, we'll send it to the whole board. I, I want to see what uh, what we could do to try to try to find uh, you know some competent bidders here to uh, to get this done and get it done quick. Okay, well, obviously, we're not going to get it done in this work season. So oh, we'll no, we're, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. We're beyond that point now, so we'll have to. But as uh, soon as that weather breaks, I want to, I want to, you know. Okay, I'll get the information to, to all the board members. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, Councilman Nayoris? Um, <coughs> no, no comments. I just want to wish everybody out there a happy uh, Thanksgiving and drive safe and be careful and try and stay out of the storm tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Deputy Supervisor Villanova. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, I, I also, too, want to wish everybody a, a very happy, uh, healthy, and a safe Thanksgiving. Uh, I want uh, everyone to, uh, you know, remember there's a lot of people that are uh, uh, having, uh, you know, a tough time, uh, you know, as always during the holidays. Uh, some of those families are right here in Fort Chester. And um, whatever we could do to help our neighbors, uh, let's take that opportunity. Uh, let's thank our neighbors for what they do. Uh, let's thank our veterans. And um, I also want to thank our, uh, our uh, staff uh, for the move. I know uh, the change is not always easy, uh, but, uh, but there is uh, some great benefits that we're going to see from, uh, from that move, and uh, things will uh, continue to improve. So uh, that being said, that's all I have to say, and uh, <coughs> I wish my daughter a happy birthday today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's it. Thanks. Um, well, and, and, and the move, how, how has the move gone, uh, Deputy Supervisor? Well, no, it's gone pretty well, as I understand it. For, from, from, a, uh, from the mechanic standpoint, I, I guess it went, it, it went well. Uh, obviously, there is still a, a, a considerable punch list uh, that we need to go through. Uh, some items are, are you know, I, I, I deem to see uh, be important. I was away for a, a, uh, just about a week and a half, but I'm back now. Uh, and, um, you know, and some items are you know, less, less important. Uh, but uh, from from that uh, from that standpoint, uh, I think that uh, uh, Bishop and, and I and uh, and and Tom uh, really held uh, held the line on uh, on the renovation uh, and held uh, were made the uh, the contractor uh, accountable, and we will continue to make that contractor uh, held accountable until the job is 100% complete. Wonderful, thank you. Well, look, I, I really want to first and foremost take this opportunity to thank you. Uh, Councilperson Nardi and Mr. Nowotnik for uh, the tremendous work, uh, tremendous effort you put into that move. Uh, it clearly was not an easy move to effect. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you because I know you, you have stayed on top of the contractor. You've really made a tremendous effort to make that work. And I know uh, uh, Confidential Secretary Nowotnik's log countless hours uh, in, in, in making that move, and I want to thank the staff as well. Uh, you can't make a move like that without the full support of the staff. Uh, I know we're still adjusting, still accommodating, uh, and again, I want to invite all staff, uh, if you think there are changes that need to be made, uh, improvements, way we can improve, we want to make absolutely certain that this move is a success. So anything you need, uh, please let us know, because uh, we, we really want it to, to make it make it look perfect but part of that uh, <coughs> carbon is the ergonomics of the office right so we want to make sure that it's it's easy to move around it's sensible uh, you know turning a turning something 45 degrees or 90 degrees or moving it 10 feet may be what's best so um, from the mechanic standpoint I think that we did everything that we needed to do to get everything where into into general space uh, but making those adjustments now is really what's important so. thank you 
<clears throat> the other thing I wanted to say, uh, and this is a little bit difficult, uh, but I want to take this opportunity to t apologize to the town board, uh, to town staff, and to this community. Um, one thing we should expect of public officials is that they conduct themselves with decorum. And uh, I lost my temper at the last meeting. Um, I shouldn't have done that. There's no excuse for that. Uh, so I want to apologize to the town staff, uh, to the right town community, uh, and this town board. Uh, for having lost my temper and, and used language that was inappropriate in a, in a public forum. Uh, so I, I want, just wanted to say that. And then finally, uh, I can't tell you how pleased I am to be here. I think it's been a long, hard move. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, tireless effort from Deputy Supervisor Villanova, uh, Mr. Nardi and Mr. Nowatnik. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled because I think we're really rationalizing the public use, public space, uh, and, and, and I think that's a, a, an important thing uh, to do uh, in, in, in today's, today's world. And then finally, uh, I guess, you know, um, I, I just want to say that, um, that, you know, I really believe the United States and our communities are being challenged as never before, uh, and, um, and, and, and basically really encourage people to get involved. Uh, you know, we've all seen Ferguson, Missouri in the news uh, this year and, 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 and as of last night. They had an election in, in April this year, a mayoral election, and the voter turnout was 14%, 14%. Uh, you know, and I think, you know, I think the other thing is I want to encourage all of us, <clears throat> you know, uh, following on from my, my apology is, you know, uh, ultimately, you know, all we can do is the best we can do in a very difficult situation. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, uh, as we get ready to give thanks on Thursday, um, as Deputy Supervisor uh, Villanova said, let's remember the less fortunate than ourselves. Uh, well, let's, you know, do everything we can uh, you know, to make our community a better community. Uh, and I certainly uh, give thanks uh, for, for our community and all the hard work that uh, this town board, uh, our right town staff have done. So uh, thank you very much. And with that, can I get a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Uh, Hope, call the roll. Collins, Nardi, Mollars, Yes. Harper. Yes, and we don't need to come back, so everybody's free to go. We'll do it here. You want to? Yeah, we can do it right here. Sure. <laughs>